Hi, I'm Ron Sutton, and uh, I was drawing the Elvira comic book for about nine years. I uh, drew almost uh, 50, about 50 stories over those nine years. Um, most of them lead stories and some of the backups. Um, how I got started working on the Elvira comic book was I was sending out samples to various companies, and I decided to send a package to Richard Howell, who was the editor at Claypool Comics, and... Uh, he made the mistake of writing me back and encouraging me by saying he didn't have any opportunities for an artist at the moment, but, you know, I should try some other larger companies. So, of course, I took that as uh, a clue to start sending him more samples, and uh, I sent him a few more samples, and suddenly he got in touch with me and said he actually had a story for me to draw. So it was... My first story was a two-parter that appeared in Elvira number 57 and number 58 called The Legend of Elvira, which was about a Mexican bandito that was an uh, identical twin to Elvira, and of course the two of them meet up for lots of hijinks. Um, it's funny because just prior to doing the Elvira comic, I had been doing... Uh, I'd actually been working in animation for a little bit, and I'd worked on the uh, Savage Dragon animated series, and uh, as I'd like to say, uh, prior to that, my drawings of women used to mostly look like men with long hair and boobs, uh, but then I worked on the Savage Dragon series, and they gave me just tons and tons and tons of artwork to do of She-Dragon, and all of a sudden my drawings of women got much, much, much better very suddenly. So... After that, all the assignments that people were offering me were, were for uh, lesbian vampires, uh, one right after the other from various small independent companies until Elvira and Claypool came along and saved me from a career of lesbian vampires. Anyway, as I was saying, I drew about 50 stories. Uh, there, this here is uh, uh, a collection of all my photocopies of all the pages that I penciled because uh, I only ever got to ink one single story of my own, um, and I think it was the first one that actually my partner Janet Hetherington wrote. Um, but anyway, I did I did somewhere in the neighborhood of six or eight hundred pages over uh, over the nine years. Um, I was, as I say, I started in number fifty-seven, and I was in the comic right up to the very last issue, the very last page of the very last issue, which was number one sixty-six. Over the years, I've actually sold off most of my original pages at conventions. But this is actually one story that I kept the whole story, uh, which I had to make a deal with the inker because, of course, the inker got a percentage of the pages. Uh, but this was written by Janet, and it was inked by my friend Hilary Barta. Um, and it's sort of a, a tribute to EC and Wallywood's uh, uh, aliens for uh, weird science and weird fantasy in particular. So... Uh, when I was penciling, I was doing extremely tight pencils. Uh, what I've got here is this is my enormous uh, light table that I've had for decades. And so before I'd start drawing something, I would, uh, I would do elaborate roughs all the time. Uh, I started out when I was doing Elvira. Let's see this. Uh, this is tissue paper, obviously, and it's ma this magic marker. This is how I was doing a lot of my roughs initially. Um, the problem with... I really like working with magic markers like this, but the problem with them, of course, is you can't erase them as you're working. So if I had changes, I was actually literally cutting them out with an X-Acto knife and replacing with a patched-in piece of uh, tracing paper. But I d in years prior, I'd always inked my own work. And so uh, when I was working with Claypool, it was one of the first times that I'd become strictly a penciler. And I wasn't sure how to deal with anchors, uh, because I was uh, very conscious that I didn't want them changing my pencils, and I thought the only way to get the look that I want is to give them as finished, tight pencils as I possibly could. So I was doing elaborate roughs, and like I said, these were the, the old roughs that I used to do, the Magic Mercury ones. Um, after that, I started doing smaller roughs, uh, which were the size of the printed page, and um, I do very tight, very elaborate roughs. And then, uh, and then what I would do is blow them up on my photocopier here behind me and then basically sort of do a, a fancy tracing on my light table. Uh, this story in particular was a, uh, a parody of Doc Savage, which was uh, uh, inked by my friend uh, John Hebink, who was uh, another one of the uh, Elvira pencilers. 
So I was doing these kind of smaller roughs, and then I would switch back for variety's sake, uh, you know, and sometimes I'd end up doing full-size roughs again. Oops. Uh, full-size roughs uh, in pencil. Uh, I like working in the, the blue pencil because it's a, it's an animation pencil and it's got kind of a waxy um, surface to it so it kind of slides around the paper easier than a regular graphite pencil and then I'd go in and you know do the final details and things and then like I say this would ultimately you know be traced onto the art table. So anyway um, and then my pencils are very, very finished. This isn't Elvira, but this is something else that I'm working on right now. So you can see how tight the pencils are. And in fact, uh, that's me actually even penciling for my own inking. So, so it's, you know, very, very precise, very clean looking work. Um, when, uh, when I was working on the Elvira comic, um, Cassandra Peterson had actual involvement. And how things worked was... Um, there were two writers I was working with, generally uh, Frank Strom, who wrote the, the bulk of the stories I drew, and, and again Janet Hetherington, my partner, and she would do stories um, pretty much based on uh, my suggestions for things that I wanted to draw, because I'd want to draw dinosaurs, so she'd do a story with Elvira meets dinosaurs, or we were doing, because it was a parody comic, uh, I would do a lot of stories that were parodies of things that I really liked, like Wallywood's Thunder Agents or The Challengers of the Unknown, um, or Doc, you know, Doc, somebody like Doc Savage or The Shadow or what have you. Um, so uh, she was able actually to write scripts, you know, based on the things that I actually wanted to draw. So um, anyway. Where Cassandra Peterson came in on all this is uh, when the initial ideas for stories came about, she would approve the story ideas, and then it would go to finish script, then I would get the, the script, and I would pencil the story, and uh, I would scan it and uh, send it into Richard Howell, the, the editor, and um, he would make very, very minor corrections on my artwork, uh, sometimes, sometimes not at all. Um, it was very easy to get along with, and we're still good friends, uh, even after all these years. Um, but what uh, then I would go out to either the letter or the inker because things changed initially when I was first working on the comic. The lettering was done directly on the art boards, and uh, later um, they, they became uh, Tom Zoller, um, the letterer. He would actually um, do it on computer and cut it out and paste it down. And these are these are pasted down ones. Um, and then once the whole book was all finished, then it would go back to Cassandra Peterson again, and uh, she would give the final approval, and pretty much she wouldn't reject things out of hand. Pretty much she would say, uh, you know, if there was something she didn't like, she wouldn't say change that. Mostly she would say, just don't do that again in the future kind of thing. Uh, there tended to be a tiny issue about how her hair was uh, drawn, because um, uh, all different artists working on the book, you know, were sort of doing their own uh, interpretation of the character. And uh, as I've always said, you know, I, this Elvira, which that's a commission piece I did just a couple months back, uh, I always felt like she was sort of my character. I know she was Cassandra Peterson's character, but the way I drew her was different than all the other artists drew her. They, they each had their own uh, their own unique approach. Um, and I still, I still do commissions like this periodically for people. It's almost done just a couple months ago. Uh, this here is actually a, another original from... This was a print that I had made to take to conventions. Um, so that was the black and white version. I thought if I'm only ever going to do one print, I want to get a zillion things inside the, the drawing, the little jokes and, and gags and stuff. Um, this is the, the printed version here. And amongst the stuff that's going on here in this drawing is, I mean, we've got the creature from the Black Lagoon, we've got this alien from the Wallywood EC, uh, Weird Science. Uh, but right back here is a copy of Elvira, uh, Mistress of the Dark, number 57, which was the first issue I had a story drawn in, so I thought that was a nice little touch to add into the, the print. So... What else to tell you? Um, I had a, I, generally I had a month to do a strip, whether it was an eight pager or a fifteen pager, and I think in one or two cases I did twenty three pager. Um, what happened was Richard would send me the script, 
and I'd go through and do all my breakdowns, and then I'd pencil it and send it in, and uh, he was collecting artwork for myself, and uh, stories drawn by John Hebink and Todd Smith and other people, and uh, as they got lettered and approved, uh, then he would slot them into um, the schedule, because it was a monthly comic, uh, 166 issues, uh, it was a monthly book, they never missed a month, it was always on schedule, um, but, and they were all, almost always, with few exceptions, they were almost always self-contained stories, so, um, one day I got the script, uh, my script, and I, I called up Richard, and I said, look, um, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, and I'm really enjoying it, but I don't feel like in a lot of respects that I'm really improving. And I said, what happens if I don't deliver the artwork at the end of the month? All you'll do is uh, put somebody else's story in into the schedule instead of mine, right? And he said, yes, that's basically what happened. And I said, okay. So I said, from this point on, when you're giving the stories, don't you don't tell me what the deadline is anymore. What's going to happen is I'm going to draw them, and I'll tell you when it's done, because I want to start spending a lot more time on each individual story, because I want to keep really improving, and I want each story I work on from this point, um, art-wise, to be better than the previous one, the next one to be better than that, the next one to be better than that. So I really slowed down a lot. Um, which from a, an art standpoint and a growing standpoint was really a good idea because I, I started getting much, much better as an artist and putting in more detail and working out better layouts and more creative ideas. But of course, I wasn't being paid by the hour, I was being paid by the page, so it was a bit of a financial hit. But, uh, but uh, I, I really loved working on the book. If the comic was still going, I'd still be drawing it, there's no question about that. Um, I still like working with, uh, working and knowing Richard Howell. The, the comic has now been ended about ten years, and Richard and I talk on the phone, you know, every couple of months. And uh, um, and John Hebank that I mentioned before, he and I are still good friends too, although he's in California and I'm here in Canada. Um, so, and then since then, I mean, I've moved on to other things. I've, I've done uh, issues of The Phantom. I did a series of uh, Honey West, the female detective from the 1960s. I did some Phantom stuff. I've uh, helped other artists. I ghost penciled uh, the Judge Parker newspaper strip for a few weeks. I, uh, at the moment, I'm working on a, <coughs> what's going to be a, a weekly Edgar Rice Burroughs comic strip adaptation of The Man Eater. Um, what else have I worked on? Um, all sorts of horror things, all sorts of uh, uh, sci-fi, uh, you know, a variety of stuff. I really don't do superhero stuff much. So, doing Elvira was kind of the best of two worlds for me because it was humor and it was horror. And uh, there was so much to like about it because, first of all, I got to draw her, so there's no problem there. And I liked the fact that as I said, the stories were mostly self-contained, so if you bought any random issue, um, you know, you, you, you weren't buying part three of an eight-part series. Um, I like the fact that they, there was no, really no sex or violence in them, so they were kid-friendly, so anybody of any age could read them. Um, there was just a, a really fun series, and uh, I mean, Richard Howell is to be commended for, you know, getting 166 issues out on a monthly basis uh, over those years, so... Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, come come look at my website. It's uh, www.ronsutton.com. That's Ron with two N's. There's about 200 pieces of artwork to look at uh, on the website, including... Uh, uh, Elvira commissions and all sorts of there's there's a lot of Elvira stuff on the site so anyway have a good convention folks hi I'm Janet Hetherington and I wrote the Elvira Mistress of the Dark comic for Playful Comics for six years I was really lucky to be able to work on the comic uh, Elvira had actually appeared in previously in both DC and Marvel versions uh, the DC comic uh, being Elvira Mistress of the Dark introducing stories um, sort of in a suspense way as a horror hostess, but with the stories not really having to do anything with her. And then with the Marvel being an adaptation of the feature film Elvira Mrs. in the Dark. When I was working at Elvira writing her stories, it was really fun because she was a very 
funny, sexy character. And as a female uh, creator, a female writer, it was empowering to be able to tell her stories from a female perspective. I like the fact that in the Claypool comics version, she actually was the center of attention. She was the protagonist. She was the person who was um, the heroine of the stories. It was interesting um, working with the Elvira company because Queen Bee Productions actually had close control um, over the scripts, over the art. Um, I worked through the editor, obviously, but uh, the editor being Richard Howell. But um, I did get a chance to get feedback on the stories while well, the feedback was if, if they liked the, the, the springboard that I wrote, which is usually one to two paragraphs of a story idea, then I could go ahead and do the script. It was really fun working on Elvira. I mean, being a mistress of the dark, the stories were, had a lot of the macabre elements. Um, this, you can see on the cover of this um, particular comic uh, that I worked on, you've got King Kong. Our house is filled with toys like King Kong. Um, I didn't write the King Kong story, I actually got to write the Spa Trot story, which Ron, Ron Sutton, my, uh, my um, partner, got a chance to draw, which he always says is one of his favorite stories. So that was, that was a great opportunity to, to look at, uh, to write about things, in this case a spa, <laughs> which I like, and Ron got to draw aliens, which he liked, so that was, that was a good combination. Um, it was interesting how I got to work on the Elvira comic book. Um, Ron had already been working, drawing the comic for about three years, and uh, we had a chance to go to a convention in New Jersey, the Chiller Show, and um, we, we met with the editor, um, Richard Howell, not, not at the show actually, outside of the show, because Ron had to dis deliver some pages to him. So we were at lunch, and I got a chance to pitch him some ideas, and he liked them. So I did a test story, basically, and um, it went from there. The, the first story I wrote was called Elvira, Web Mistress of the Dark. And the first thing I found out about Richard is he really likes a lot of text. Every panel had to have a joke. And uh, it was a challenge. It really helped you hone your, your storytelling and writing um, craft because every panel had to have something going on in it. And um, whether it was a, a joke or, or visual humor. And so working with different artists, um, it always surprised me. Like, you could write something, and then when the artist takes it and brings it to another level, it was always a, a, a wonderful surprise for me and, and really super funny. I, I was really lucky as, an art, as a writer. You don't usually get a chance to have original art, but... Um, because I worked with Ron so often, he gifted me um, this particular page, which is one of the stories we worked on together called Delectable Collectibles, which is about Elvira at a flea market, obviously, and she comes across a haunted cauldron. And then also I got a chance uh, to work with uh, John Keeping on several occasions, and um, he did this story, which was really fun, and it was uh, actually a parody of the Survivor TV show, so Elvira's uh, lost on an island, and um, she had to uh, take her team and get her off the island. It, it was, it's, it's all very silly. That was the great thing about the Elvira comic, is everything was super silly and super fun, and um, I was really lucky, Ron and I both, to have a chance to meet Elvira um, Cassandra Peterson on several occasions at different comic book shows, and one time in Montreal Comic Con, we actually got to sit right beside her at the show, and she was just lovely. I mean, she really liked her fans, she loves her fans, and to this day, I mean, she's still going strong. I, you know, I'd love to have a chance to work on her stories again, and hopefully, you know, maybe someday the license will get picked up again, and there'll be another Elvira comic, and I'll have a chance to explore her stories some more. Thank you.